After you have a page of thumbnails, or roughs, some people call them roughs, what I do um, is, I, is I go to the pencils. Nick just is, kind of reminds me of my hero Jack Kirby, in that he has a well of ideas and imagination, and it always inspires me to think beyond my little trappings. And then hopefully, when I, you know, we have this kind of like, not tug of war, but this like good tension, um, we're able to really inspire each other and just push all, you know, walls to the side, you know, and serve the project. Meaning, you know, I'm not trying to always be nutty and crazy. But, you know, that's a lot of fun, and that's the kind of stuff that me and Nick kind of jive on, you know? Um, but then Nick also is very good at doing really quiet and subtle things. And that's stuff that I always learn from Nick, is how to, like, pull back sometimes. And it's like a pacing thing. If panel two is uh, very similar to, to panel one, you, could, you probably should be doing animation, because you're trying to express movement. What should be happening between panel one and panel two, there should be a significant enough change between those two panels so that the gutter, that white space between each panel, is filled up by the reader's mind. To know Nick, you know that he is very interested in music, he plays in a band, and he talks a lot about how comics are similar to music in that there are beats. The way that he writes is almost how someone would write a piece of music. He talks a lot about the editing that goes into adding or removing beats. When I'm done roughing out the pencils of that page, I look at it and I say, is there something interesting going on in this page? Or is there a little complete story on this page? Which means something as simple as somebody pouring themselves a, a, uh, a drink of orange juice from an orange juice container. And they start that on panel one and they end that on panel six at the end of the page. And it's not a story, but it's a moment that has a beginning, middle, and end. A page break is a natural break in the storytelling. And when you go right to another scene, you don't allow that natural rhythm, that, that a page turn, a breath, a storyteller's breath, can achieve. All right. There's my panel border. What I generally do first is I use a non-repro blue pencil, non-reproductive. It doesn't, uh, when you scan it in, when you scan in your final line work, this doesn't show up which means that you don't have to erase it. Working from my, my thumbnails, mm -hmm. I start drawing, I start laying in the basic shapes. Taxi cabs in 1907 had these uh, great little lamps on the side, and they're just a nice little detail. I wanna leave enough room for my dialogue boxes too. Okay. Character one's gonna be talking, character two. If you wanna draw strong characters, without using a lot of lines and making it as economical as possible because you're going to be drawing this character a lot. The more simple this character is, the easier it will be to draw. There are a number of books on caricature. And then I get a little more detailed with the shape of the, the heads. They all have different shaped heads. Mm -hmm. This character has a long pointy nose and long chin and a little tiny mustache. This character is kind of heavy and she has a bun on top of her head. They tell you how to break down different faces. Uh, they're square faces, square jaws, round jaws, heart-shaped heads. Okay, and then I want to lay in some of the background elements. 